our next step is going to be to mount our motors onto the arms that is what i've chosen to do uh, purely because uh, i don't want my escs on my arms i am going to mount my escs to the bottom plate the reasoning behind that is that they, they are, there are two camps people that believe that the escs should be on the arms and others who believe it should be on the frame now I'm not going to even try and go into the technicalities of why that is and why it is not. But my belief is, as it is with uh, many others, uh, maybe 50% or the one half, that um, when power flows in a direction, it flows very much like water. And when your ESC is on this side and your power flows very much like water to this side, and you cut power to the ESC, there's a stop. Now, if you have a tap at a long point and you suddenly stop it, there's a pressure buildup behind it. And that pressure buildup has a bit of a slamming effect, which is the reason why ESCs have the capacitors just to filter out that high uh, voltage buildup behind it. And um, well, that is the one, one thinking. And if you constantly have that, then you may have ESCs in the long run burn out. Whether it's true or not, um, I'm going with a camp that believes you should not be doing that. Now, when you have your ESCs on the inside, you have a short distance between your input power and the ESC. So when you cut voltage to slow down the, the, the power to the motor, then you cut it off here and there is no pressure build up between the ESC which stopped the power and the motor but anyway that is just my thinking and the camp I believe in and this <laughs> those guys but if you wish to put them on the on, on the edge and mount them at the bottom that is all up to you I'm just going with a camp that uh, believes that the ESC should be on the inside of your frame, which I will be, I'll figure out how to mount my ESCs at the bottom of that. Right, when we are finished with this mounting, I've already done one year, then it will look like this. I fed the power cables for the motor through the arm and out here on this edge. And uh, I will show you exactly how that looks when we are as we are building it and uh, I believe this actually looks fairly neat it is simple looks neat and it's I believe it's not going to break apart right let me go ahead and show you how I did that now just to mention I'm not going to be using the prop adapters but uh, depending on the props that you got, you might need them. I've got these 12 inch props and I will be directly mounting them. So I will not be using the prop adapters. And that is why my motors look a little bare. Right, let's go ahead and see what we need. We are going to need a, a two millimeter hex uh, head. We are also going to need a, that's a 1.5, it's not needed. We're also going to need a 2.5 millimeter hex for this specific one, just because my motor mounts, etc., need them. I'll also have here another 2.5 um, millimeter head, and I'll show you why I've got this one instead of this one, which I have the plugins for. Because once it gets to mounting the actual plate, mount, uh, mounting plate, that one doesn't quite fit, so you're going to need something that has a long shaft, so you can just get in there. Uh, obviously, we're going to need our screws, we need our motor. We are going to be using a thread locker, and this is our motor mounting plate. Right, I'm going to put all of that a little one side, and I'm going to show you where we start. Let me just get that one side. Using the motor. We are going to start with this arm. The color, etc., doesn't matter. It's uh, obviously the one of the, head, uh, the arms that has this little end point on it, which is the swivel point for the frame. It swivels on that when we screw that down. However, what we have to bear in mind here is that 
This one has a screw running right through it. Oh, okay, you're not going to see it on that camera. Let's see if we can see it on this one. Okay, so that runs right through. And because that runs right through, um, we have to remove that screw because when we have to run the motor uh, wires through, it's going to be in the way. So that's the very first thing that I did on the other one. Obviously, we will be using thread locker again when we reattach the screw because uh, it is it turns into a little metal or brass stub on the side. Okay, comes out fairly easily. It's a very thin little screw. Right, I'm just going to pop that into my little holder here on one side. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we bring our plate close closer. Mounting this is, I would say it's simple, but for some it may actually not be as simple as that. What you have to bear in mind when you turn your motor upside down is that these screws are further away, or these screw mountings are further away from each other than these. So you have to space them as such. Now. Yeah, your close ones, these are your far ones, which means it's going to mount a little that way. Your wires are going to be on this side. Now, I found that uh, <laughs> when I tried to mount the first one, putting through the wires first is a mess. It's tricky. So at first, I'm not going to put, it, put through all the wires. I'm just going to first mount the motor as is directly on here and let's see where it fits okay it's on that side right my motor came with its screws inside this little packet with its little prop adapter and okay, take out the prop adapter one side I'm not going to use the prop adapter but should I need it later should I decide to change props it is there I'm going to take out the screws which I do not need Okay, I'm going to put them all back in the packet, just for later storage, together with a prop adapter. Right, that goes one side. Just to get the spacings and everything, just using my fingers, I'm just going to angle these and turn these in. Use my fingers only, just so I can get the spacing correct. Otherwise, you have a thread locker messing all over the place. Right. So now we've got those four screws in there, and the entire the plate is pretty much locked. It's not going to move all over the place as we try and screw this down. Now we can get our thread, thread locker ready and we just simply remove the first screw. These screws for the motors are two and a half millimeter. So I'm going to bring my two and a half millimeter head closer. If you're wondering what that is, that which I have on the tip of the uh, uh, hex screw is so just a tiny little neodymium magnet. The reason I use that is just to <laughs> magnetize these slightly so that it doesn't go flying away. Right, and I'm going to give it a tad of thread locker. We just need a little bit of that stuff. And turn it in. Now to start off with, I'm just going to turn it until it gets close by. I'm not going to batten it down because uh, we still need to space these and place the others as well. Okay, next one. Just a tad of thread lock again. Back one in there. 
and I'm pretty sure you get the idea we're going to do all four motors in a similar fashion okay now that we have all four thread locker and they've been seated we can now start turning them down again I'm now using my two finger rule which says I am going to turn until it's uncomfortable for two fingers to hold on to the screwdriver any more than that you're probably going to break something and that should be enough right now the next thing is and before I carry on let me just put the cap back on my thread locker I'm just going to feed these wires through that little spacing. You'll see that obviously um, there's a little spacing between the motor and the mounting and these wires are going to fit through there. Right, you have to do them unfortunately one at a time. It's red and black. Right. We can look at them and see if we need to change wire configurations or spacings, etc., to see which ones because we don't want it touching the motor as it spins. So the red is a little on the close side, so I'm just going to twist it around a bit to this side so it's beneath the black. All right, there we go. And as you can see there, when we pull these taut, the motor can still spin freely. Now guys, at this stage, um, the motors that I'm using are HYDRC 5010-7KV brushless motors, but you are welcome to use whatever motor you choose to use. Um, I'm not going to prescribe to you exactly what motors you must use, um, it's totally up to you. So if you have decided to go for 38 or 40s or I don't really care what motor you decide to go for. Uh, if you feel it can lift and you have done your calculations and it can do the lifting weight, then by all means. Now I have chosen to mount my motors with this mounting screw of the arm to the top. And my reason is simply that uh, should this come loose in any other way, for some whatever reason that screw is going to hold down with gravity I've done the same with this one so it won't fall out and this whole arm go flying etc right now getting these motor wires past the first little screw is actually quite simple and if you are doing this on your own motor your own mount your own 690s frame then you will soon realize why <laughs> I removed that bottom screw now these wires come out fairly easily right now the next thing is we're going to pull them towards slightly batten this down a little and there we go looks fairly neat obviously I'll tie that down as much as needed Right, now our next step is to pull those down. Now, obviously, these are the screws that came with the frame. We're going to need four of them. Oops, there's five. Put one back in the packet. And again, those we have to pull down with uh, thread locker. Now, yeah, we are going to need this one. And this one is the two millimeter. This, these screws are two millimeter screws. Right, I'm going to start from that one side. Going to give them a little, little thread locker. Tad more. There you go. Right. And pull it down. Now 
these obviously again you don't want to pull them down all the way until you have all your screws seated so screw uh, uh, seat your screws before tying them down because if you screw down the first one too tightly you might get screwed on the rest because you know, alignment right and number three ten thread locker now yeah you can see why I use this long uh, hex screwdriver because this one is just it skews and it's, it's just a mess trying to work with these screws then so yeah make sure you have <laughs> one that has a, a long arm right and that's the last one now yeah you're going to find that these wires are a little in the way but fortunately with these motors you can just squeeze them out of the way slightly yeah, this will obviously depend from motor to motor differ from motor to motor but these HYDs are actually pretty perfect, easy to work with. Okay, and again, two finger rule, screw them down as tightly as two fingers will comfortably batten them down. And no more, we don't want to break things. Right and obviously just check these cables that they are flat out of the way and there we have there's more than enough space motor is mounted lovely and again that looks very neat you've got your cable coming out this side the our very last thing remaining is to take our long little screw and put that through here again now it does turn into this little brass a nut on this side. I'm not going to try and put a thread locker onto it from its tip because it actually turns into the plastic a bit on this side. So by the time it gets to the other side, it's probably going to lose all of its thread locker. Once we have it turning into the brass part, I'm going to put in thread locker from this side just a tad. Okay, and there you go just to make sure that it's in there there you go and don't don't be too concerned if it pushes out a little bit the thread locker actually needs very little of its of itself to get in there and actually lock the thread and there you have it there's another arm completed I'm going to do the other four, which are now remaining because I've now have two. I'm not going to record all four of them again because the process obviously is exactly the same for all of them. Right guys, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. If you like the video, obviously like, please, and uh, subscribe to follow the entire process of me building this Iron Man 680 uh, frame known as the FY690S uh, or TL68C01 if you really wish and uh, let's see if we can get this thing flying and into the air and that is the way that I have decided to do my motor mounts